Today I want to tie Steinberg back to some of the other theories that we've looked at throughout the course of the term. So if you think way back to the beginning when we talk about Plato, Plato is thinking about art in these terms of imitation, of representing things. And so paintings like the, the couple here, well, that seems like a pretty straightforward sort of representational, imitative painting that Plato would recognize. These things are representing beds. Well, now when we talked about Greenberg this week, we saw that Greenberg says, yeah, around the turn of the, the 20th century, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, you get these folks, these post-impressionists like Van Gogh. This is a painting by Van Gogh here of his bedroom. And Greenberg identifies what's going on here is that uh, Van Gogh is not just trying to represent a bed here, but he's, he's uh, you know, maybe he's doing that a little bit. You can tell it's a bed, but at the same time, he's highlighting the way that that representation of a bed is being created out of a particular medium, namely a flat canvas. And he does this in part by uh, really, well, shortening up the space between the front of the canvas and, well, the back of it, as it were. Uh, so that there's not there's not as much depth and the depth is not as, as perfect as it is with those two other uh, uh, paintings of beds. Well, now Steinberg is thinking about some art that starts coming out around uh, the middle of the 20th century in the 1950s in which uh, the, things get a little weirder. So you can go to this piece, which is by Robert Rauschenberg. And if you look closely... Here what we have is an actual freaking bed. There's just a bed hung on the wall there covered with some paint. You can look up closely. There's a, there's a pillow on the top. It's lying on a mattress. And then there's a blanket or a quilt draped over that. And then Rauschenberg has just come in and, you know, splashed some paint on top of the actual bed. So we've moved from a style of painting in which you are imitating and trying to create the illusion of uh, of a bed on a flat piece of canvas to something that, that Greenberg points out, like Van Gogh's piece, where Van Gogh is, yeah, creating this illusion, but at the same time calling our attention to the fact that it is an illusion, to now uh, Rauschenberg making this piece that just doesn't really have any illusion to it. It's, it's not a representation of a bed. It's just an honest-to-God bed. Uh, and then you can go even further. Here's uh, a sculpture by Klaus Oldenburg, which just is, well, a bed and a bedroom. He's just created a bedroom. And so there's something really interesting going on. And, and one of Steinberg's points is, look, you are not going to be able to understand pieces of art like Rauschenberg's bed or Klaus Oldenburg's bedroom or uh, Duchamp's fountain, which he just took a urinal out of a bathroom and stuck it in the art gallery, uh, or Jasper John's target with four faces, you're not going to be able to understand these things if you're still thinking in terms of that whole Platonic or Aristotelian idea of representation. These things are not representing or imitating something else. They just are the things that they are. Uh, so, for example, with the target and the four faces here, you know, there's no real good way to make a representation of a target without making an actual target. What Jasper Johns has created here is just, well, an, an actual target. You could shoot arrows at it, if you like. And so it seems like it's going to be really difficult to understand what's interesting or compelling about this piece of artwork using any of the previous theories that we've looked at this term. It doesn't seem like you can make sense of it in representational terms, as we've just seen. It doesn't seem to really evoke all that much in terms of emotion. And even though, you know, you might think, well, yeah, yeah, but what about like Kant and, and Clive Bell? They, they were saying, oh, you don't need any of that representational stuff. You can just understand art in terms of its significant forms. You might think, oh, yeah, maybe something like that's going on here. It's these concentric circles. That's kind of a significant form that might be kind of interesting, might give you some sort of aesthetic emotion. 
But what Steinberg is saying here is, yeah, I don't know. You look at this and you don't think, yeah, that's that's not that interesting of a significant form. And really, you're missing something if you don't realize, oh, right. It's not just a representation of a target. It's not just the form of a target. It just is an honest-to-God target. And so now we've got this, this new theory of different kinds of art that uh, you can think of as just being an object in and of itself and not pointing at or representing or imitating anything else, be that imitating another object like a bed or even creating some sort of form in space. And this is what you see in a lot of Jasper John's work. You, you can think the same thing about his painting of an American flag here. Again, just like a target, um, it's kind of hard to make the image of an American flag without making, well, just an honest-to-God American flag. That's what this is. It's not an imitation of a flag. It's not, you know, the, the representation of a flag. It just is a flag. Same thing with numbers. <laughs> if you write a bunch of numbers down, they're not... Well, I guess we really should say numerals in this case. You could write a bunch of numerals down, but you're never going to create the representation of a numeral because a numeral just is that. When you write an eight down on a piece of paper, it just is the number eight. And so what Steinberg points out is, look, this is really different than the way that we might be able to understand other uh, similarly kind of abstract paintings like this Kandinsky, because at least here, even though there's no particular object like a bed or a face that's being represented or are uh, imitated, there's still like, I don't know, a, a world that you can get into, right? There's, there you can see, well, yeah, there's these circles and they're kind of floating in space and these other things that are behind them or in front of them. This is what Steinberg calls a painting of illusion. It's creating an illusion of something. It's not an illusion of everyday object or, or anything. It's very abstract, but we can still understand it in terms of creating a space that's different from the actual space of the flat canvas that it's painted on. Same thing with a painting like this by Roberto Matta. Again, very abstract. You might be able to understand it in terms of, uh, of Kant's or Bell's notions of significant form. And yet it's still, even though it's got this abstract form, it's still creating a space that goes beyond just the flat space of the canvas. And it's kind of, I, I really like this one because it just really plays with that idea. It looks like there are some places where there's it looks like there's kind of holes in the surface of the painting and stuff behind that. But then when you try and figure the logic of that out, it, it doesn't really hold up all that well. Oh, it's so cool. I'm really compelled by, by these Roberto Matto paintings for some reason. Um, but nonetheless, Steinberg would say, yeah, 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 this is a very abstract painting, but it's still a painting of illusion. Even something like this by Franz Klein, this uh, Maho Mo Mohoning, I think it, it, it's called. Uh, Mahoning, sorry. Uh, you know, it's very, very abstract, uh, not representing a bed or anything like that, but still, it's creating this space that is other than the space of just the flat canvas. There is, like Steinberg says, you can see there's like a, a line of energy that's going through a, a more three-dimensional space or even maybe a two-dimensional space. Um, but it, it causes us to look beyond the actual piece of canvas and chunks of paint that are on the canvas and see this kind of imaginary world or space that exists beyond that stuff. Same thing even with a, a painting like this, which uh, this is by, by Pete Mondrian. Uh, and this is, again, the sort of thing that Greenberg would say, aha, you know, Mondrian is doing this really cool, innovative thing. He's calling our attention to the fact that we're looking at a flat surface that is bounded by its four sides and the painting only exists within that surface and on those sides. And yet, yet still, uh, Mondrian has created this sort of space that exists a little, you know, apart from the canvas. You can still think of those lines as overlapping one another, even though there aren't any lines that are overlapping there. There's just 
paint that's on a canvas. And so what folks like Jasper Johns are doing, Steinberg says, is they're going beyond illusion in this way. They're creating these things that, yes, they involve these abstract forms, the way that some of those other paintings we just looked at do, but they go, they're going beyond just merely creating forms that are interesting. They are instead just kind of gripping us by the, the jacket and shaking us and saying, look, this is not an illusion of anything. This is just its own thing in and of itself. That's all there is here. And to really understand that kind of artwork, you need to go beyond this expectation that whatever you're looking at in a painting is going to create this illusion of some kind or another and realize, oh, what Johns is doing is something really radically new in the history of art. He's going beyond illusion and trying to snap us out of that tendency to see illusions and to instead just see what is in front of us on its own terms.